Hello and welcome back to another episode of Your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. This is a really cool topic that I want to talk about today. You know, in the past, we've definitely covered the history of our forefathers coming from the Palatinate region of Germany to North America, to the United States, of course, or at that point, Colonial America. And I also did a video previously that talked about a group of Palatines that left Germany and instead of coming to North America went to South America and settled parts of Brazil. You can check out that video, I'll link it down below. There was another group of Palatines that also left Germany and didn't go to Brazil or colonial North America, and they're a group we want to talk about a little bit today. They went to, of all places, Ireland. I was not aware of this history until I came across an article one day online. I thought, this is a really cool story. So we want to talk today about the Palatines our distant cousins who left Germany as well, but instead of coming with us or going to South America, they decided to go to Ireland. It's a really cool story. So let's dive in. In the early 17th century, so we're talking 1600s, that lower German Palatinate region, where a lot of us come from, was rich with Protestant refugees from neighboring lands. And families started to settle there to rebuild their lives and escape persecution. The Palatinate was repeatedly ravaged over time by attacks from France during the 1600s. And following a terribly harsh winter and responding to notices by New World landowners showing the benefits of emigrating to America, a substantial exodus of Palatine families occurred in 1709. Some of those emigrants from 1709 found their way directly to the New World, but over 13,000 were rooted through London. The landlords of Irish estates wanted to increase the Protestant tenant population, a goal supported by Queen Anne of England. In September of 1709, almost 3,000 Palatines were relocated to rural Ireland, with a roughly equivalent number being transported to New York and North Carolina. Over the following three years, more than two-thirds of the Irish Palatine settlers left Ireland and returned to England and Germany. Of the landlords who successfully managed to induce their allotment of Palatine immigrants to remain in rural Ireland, the most successful was Sir Thomas Southwell of Castle Matrix near Rathkeel County, Limerick. He championed the Palatines to secure government support for the settlement venture and took care of many of their initial needs at considerable personal expense, being reversed only just before his death in 1720. In 1711, Southwell had retained only 10 families, but by 1714 he had settled about 130 families on his land, and the region around his demesne had retained the largest concentration of Irish Palatine residents to this day in the towns of Killeheen, Ballingrain, and Court Matrix. Later, secondary colonies were settled at Adair, Paliskenry, Glenoshean, Ballyorgan, and Ballyriggan in Limerick. Kilcooley in Tipperary, and Ballymayscalot and Tabert in Kerry. All of these later settlements came from the parent colonies at Rathkeel. The most successful colony was that in County Limerick. By 1720, the Palatines across Ireland consisted of about 180 families, and over 100 of these were in Limerick. Throughout the rest of the 18th century, the families intermarried among themselves and with other Protestant settlers, establishing further settlements in the area. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, visited the area many times, and many families converted to Methodism under his influence throughout the 1700s. However, by those same 1700s, many of their lease agreements had expired and the local families were subject to untenable rent increases. This same rent racking, as it became known, caused many of the Ulster Scots families of north of Ireland to head to the colonies of North America to try their luck at that time. This factor, combined with weather-related crop failures and cholera outbreaks, encouraged a number of Palatine families to try their luck in the newly established lands and townships of North America. Some Palatine families did stay in the area, though, and remain to this day. You can still find plenty of these Pennsylvania Dutch-style surnames throughout Ireland. Shear, Modler, Schweitzer, Keel, Teske, Baker, Young, <laughs> and other Palatine names as well. 
To learn more about this fascinating part of history, you can visit a group called the Irish Palatine Association. This group, since its inception in 1989, has endeavored to preserve the rich heritage of the Irish Palatine culture by encouraging and developing a sense of identity among Irish Palatine families and their descendants around the world by rekindling a relationship with their ancestral homeland of the Rhineland Falls in Germany. The Irish Palatine Heritage Center houses an exhibition that seeks to represent in detail the Irish Palatine experience ranging from their German place of origin to their colonization and settlement in Ireland and their subsequent scattering all over the English-speaking world. Due emphasis is placed on the Palatine's innovative contribution to Irish farming life and on their formative role in the development of the world Methodism. The center features an extensive display of artifacts, photographs, graphics, etc. associated with the Palatine story. Now, how about that? So these Palatines that came to Ireland had a similar story, I guess we could say, to those of us that came to North America in that we, we came, we were given the opportunity to have some land, we worked the land, and in, in, in the case of the Irish Palatines, much like the Palatines that came to Pennsylvania, we contributed to the farming life of that region. So... I just thought it was really cool that there's this group of, of our distant Pennsylvania Dutch cousins, so to speak, that were in Ireland and some stayed, some went, stayed a little bit and then left for whatever reason, but then there were ones that stayed the long term, right? I just find that absolutely fascinating. I didn't know it. At some point, we need to have one big Palatine reunion where all these groups come together. We have the Pennsylvania Dutch, we have the, the, the Hunsricker, the ones that are down in Brazil, and we have these Irish... Palatines all coming together we have a big picnic. Could you imagine how much fun that would be? We got Irish Celtic music going over here. We got Pennsylvania Dutch Appalachian music going on over here. And then we got Pennsylvania Dutch style samba and reggae and whatever else <laughs> on the other side. And the one giant picnic. Imagine the foods. Oh, let's make that happen somehow. <laughs> to talk to the entire diaspora of the Palatines throughout the world. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I'm going to link the Irish or the Palatine Irish Palatine Heritage Center's website down below in the show notes so you can check that out and learn more. Just thought it was a really cool opportunity to talk about a part of history that I didn't realize existed. Those are always the best types of history, right? If you have an idea for a future video, please email me. Email is at the end. Of course, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, please support us by buying a coffee. All money raised through that campaign will go to the upkeep of the channel. Tell your friends about all the good things we're doing here at the channel. If you haven't subscribed and liked, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and then tell all your friends about the great stuff that we're doing here and share the videos, share the link, and get them all to subscribe too. <laughs> Till next time, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch and mock scoot. Mark good!